just to give you an example, the difference between stress and burnout, because I have a lot of people that say that I'm so burnt out. And when I ask them like what, what their symptoms are, they're talking more about the stress and not the burnout. And I don't want people to be confused. I want you to understand, I mean, obviously you understand that the issues that you have as busy lawyers, um, things you have to deal with, um, we can see where the stress becomes out of hand and burnout starts to take over. But what you might not know is that stress and burnout are not the same things, but they are absolutely related. You might be a little addicted to it and don't wanna let it go, but let me just give you a little side note here. Just like a little bit of stress can motivate you, so can a little bit of hustle. However, when it becomes habitual, it will wreak havoc on your nervous system and prime you for burnout. Welcome to my legal academy, helping lawyers work smart, scale fast, and enjoy life. This is an important topic that could make or break you or your business. So it's very important that you take this kind of seriously, if you will. <laughs> okay, so before the pandemic, how many of you actually knew what burnout was? Probably some of you, because it's not new. It's just one of those things that we hear about, but we don't really understand. It was out there, but it wasn't as prevalent as it is today. Today, 75% of workers experience burnout. 75%, that's pretty much all of the workforce. Um, and many just don't know how to relieve their symptoms. And for lawyers, according to a study um, that was done in 2022, 86% of female lawyers and 70% of male lawyers are experiencing burnout. So lawyers in particular, as you all know, struggle with lots of things in your stressful job of being a lawyer. Some of these are gonna probably sound familiar to you. Let's go through these. So high workload, obviously you're working long hours, you're taking on a large workload, and this is going to amplify exhaustion. So that you're gonna hear some very recurrent themes as I go through this. Time pressure, pressure of deadlines. This increases stress and anxiety. Perfectionism. You strive for perfection. Um, you, you may have unrealistic expectations and you never really meet those set expectations. So you feel less than. There's also an emotional toll that comes with this. Difficult clients, difficult cases, difficult circumstances, which takes an emotional toll. And an emotional toll can lead to burnout. So for example, feelings of depression, that's an emotional toll of having a lot of stress in your job. Isolation. So if you work often alone and you don't have a lot of time for a social life, you're gonna feel isolated and disconnected. And that's a very, that's one of those emotional ones that is going to break down quickly and make your life just that much harder. So really pay attention to these things. Lack of control. I know a lot of us talk about this. We don't have a lot of control over our schedule sometimes because of the clients coming in and out or wanting our, our attention very often. Your schedule might not be something you control very well or even the work environment that you're in. These all contribute to burnout. Conflict, conflict with clients, colleagues, opposing counsel. <laughs> this increases your anxiety and stress. So you can see your nervous system is ramping up with each of these that I was talking about. Then there's financial pressures. You feel the financial need to take on more cases, fill more hours, and you're sacrificing work-life balance, which creates even more exhaustion. Lack of support. This makes it difficult to manage your workload. So obviously it will contribute to burnout if you have just heaps and heaps of work that only you can do, or you think you can do. And then the last one is limited career mobility. Some of you might feel trapped in your career path and it creates dissatisfaction in your work. Moving on. So now that we have that kind of lined out, you can see where the stress is. So I want to talk about the hustle though, because there's a great amount of hustle mentality that will push you to the edge of your stress response. And like I said in that last slide, all of those like exhaustion and overwhelm and not being able to control things that go on in your life, that really does amplify your nervous system, which is what really causes a lot of this, these problems. So there, the hustle mentality will push you to the edge of that stress response and eventually burn out. Hustle is really a trap. And like that, that quote says, the hustle is a trap that keeps you in a cycle of stress and burnout because you're constantly chasing your tail, right? You're constantly trying to do more than is necessary most of the time. And well, you might think it's necessary, but it doesn't mean that it actually is. So what is hustle mentality? Well, hustle mentality is doing whatever it takes 
no matter what. You don't give up, no matter how extreme the challenge, you feel that you need to be successful, admired, accomplished, so you perform. Okay, so let's shine a light on hustle mentality. So there are eight fallacies that I want you to be aware of. But let's start with overworking. So overworking, the fallacy is that you need to constantly be working in order to be successful. I'm sure most of us, I am one of those people that totally believe this and would push and push and push. So studies actually show though, that if you take breaks, if you care about your health and well-being, you are going to be more productive long-term. So false, <laughs> you don't need to constantly work like all night, all day to be successful. All right, the second one, time. Time, the, the fallacy of a belief is that time is the most important part of success. But really, consistency and dedication both also play a very strong role in success. So when you're always worried about time, maybe if you just understood the consistency portion, that would get you where you need to go, not necessarily um, you know, using up every ounce of your time to, to work. Third one is competition. I don't know about you, but I'm a very competitive person. <laughs> and I did believe that it was necessary to compete against other coaches, other lawyers, or other firms, or other ways to do things. And you have this, this mentality of, I must win. I have to always be winning. But in reality, collaboration and cooperation are also very powerful tools for the success of the way that you feel, your life, and your business. Okay, sacrifice. This one and self-reliance, I think are the biggest ones for a lot of you, um, based on what I've learned from you being here at My Legal Academy. So sacrifice. A lot of us believe that you must give up your life to be successful and just do the thing to make you successful. You don't really worry much about yourself. You just want to get to the goal. Now, sacrificing your health is something that we tend to do first. We need to take care of ourselves. Right? We need to take care of our health, our relationships, and other important areas of your life, whatever that is, because it's not worth it. It is not worth it. Now hear me, this is very important. I want you to hear me on this. You are the greatest asset for your business and probably your family, right? You are the greatest asset. So what happens if you're the greatest asset in your business? What happens if you go down? Then probably a lot of your business goes down with you. So you need to be very aware of what's happening in your body so that you don't get to that point. A steady work-life balance will create better success long-term. All right, the next one's productivity. So productivity is believed to equal success. Now, I think that I kind of thought that was a little laughable when I read that, because I don't know if I, that was just strange to me, because to me, productivity has never really necessarily meant success because how many of us actually use busy work as a way to be productive. And busy work is usually not something that gets you to success, right? It's something that we do to make us feel like we're doing something that's going towards our goal. But in reality, busy work is usually the things that once you hire a VA, you can pass that on and you can do the real creative part of your business and use your brain for things that you want to grow and not just this busy work. Okay, self-reliance, here's the other one. Oh, Bree says, busy for me, distraction equals distraction from the frustration of not achieving the goals. Right. Okay, self-reliance. You have to do everything on your own to be successful. Okay, this one, I every time I think about this, it's when people are trying to, they want to hire a VA, but they're totally afraid to because of control. They want to have control <laughs> or they're just a, a, afraid. They have a fear of some kind that keeps them stuck in this space. Okay. So here's the truth. You do not have to, nor should you do everything yourself. Okay. Cause being a martyr puts you on the fast track to burnout. I know I was there. It is very, very dangerous. It's a slippery slope. You don't want to go down. So ideally you're going to build a strong support system, automation, VAs, etc., So you can do less better. I mean, that's why you're in this program, right? automation, VAs, all of this stuff, we're teaching you how to do in a way that is sustainable. The other fallacy is the overnight success fallacy. Maybe when you first started, people said, oh, you're gonna, it's gonna happen quickly. Your business is gonna scale right away. But if it doesn't, you make this mean that something is wrong with you or your process. 
it probably has nothing to do with all of those rolled into one. It's probably a little bit of everything just comes together at the wrong time or the wrong place. But I want to tell you, it takes time to build a business. I know you know this, but I'm just going to remind you, it takes time. So if you can be patient and keep yourself healthy and be persistent in growing your firm, it will, you'll be fine. You just got to be persistent and keep yourself healthy. Have realistic expectations though. That is the one thing I know a lot of us struggle with. Our expectations are not realistic. And if they aren't, then we get upset by the failure, the setback. In reality, the failure is actually your growth. The only way that you can learn how to how learn what is going to work and what isn't is if you try things and you fail. We call it failing forward in the coaching world. <laughs> failing forward, getting the failure out of the way, moving on. Okay, this is extremely normal. So just remember that when it's happening, it is normal. And then the last one we have is uniformity. This is where the belief is that there's only one path to success. That sounds great. I wish there was only one path, then we'd all be on the same page. But no, there is what, there's more than one way to create a successful business. Figure if you, what, so if you are trying to do what someone else is doing, it's probably, it, one, it doesn't make you feel good. It just makes you feel like, oh, I'm not doing it as good as this person is. So figure out how you want to run your firm and your life. Don't just copy and paste someone else's. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you're a lawyer and you're looking to work smart, scale fast and enjoy life, right below this video, you'll find a link to book a call to speak to my team. So we can tell you how we've been able to help over 500 law firm owners scale their law firm. Now back to the video. A lot of us, like I had mentioned, this comes from society mainly. There is a lot of, of things that we're told when we're younger and that we've just like stuck with. We just keep doing it because it's what we've always known how to do. And the way that your mind works is if it's something you've done forever, that's what your mind wants you to keep doing because it knows how to do it. It's like a routine. So doing anything differently feels wildly uncomfortable most of the time. So it's very normal that you continue to do these things. But now if we're getting to a place of burnout, we need to like stop. No more of that. We need to start to, we got to get uncomfortable a little bit to make changes that is actually going to help us and help our business grow and be able to not feel fear all the time around this because that of course does not feel good. No one wants to be there. Okay. Thanks for sharing those. Um, so I want you to also think about which of these fallacies could be the precursor to your loss of energy and drive. And if you wrote them down, then those are probably them, right? Um, basically, if we lose our energy, we lose our drive, we lose our mojo, if you will, we're going to be putting ourselves into the path of burnout. So with this, you could probably see how these small, these small things, they don't seem like much until you add them all up. These small things can build and wreak havoc on your nervous system. And really the goal is to keep you and your law firm thriving. So that is what we're after. Okay. So let's just a quick note about mindset. When it comes to hustle mentality, there's usually a large amount of fear that creates the desire to hustle, which we've just un uncovered in that last slide. Okay, so what is the fear or reason? What is your fear, I should say? What is your fear or your reason that creates your desire to hustle? You know, maybe it's FOMO, maybe your fear of missing out. You wanna be like everybody else. You wanna make sure that you're, you're leading the way in your um, area of practicing law. Whatever it is, you don't want to miss out. I think for a lot of people that is it. They don't want to be behind. They want to be right there in the race with everybody else. Finances, financial freedom. I can't have my kids grow up the way I did. I want to be successful. Yes, 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 yes. The cases drive the work and the deadlines and limiting cases only creates financial fears. Soul breadwinner. Oh, I can already feel like <laughs> the pressure that everyone's under and I this is exactly why we're doing this because I want to make sure that you can switch this a bit and get to a different place okay so let's think about how we can let go of hustle mentality all right so here are three ways to let go of hustle mentality the first one is practicing discernment what I want you to do is stay aligned with your goals despite how good that next shiny object <laughs> sounds or looks right? Stay aligned with, it's really easy to look at the next person who's practicing law, doing this different thing that you need to go and do that. No, <laughs> try not to do that. Okay. Think about in the past, how many courses have you purchased and never looked at? 
how many other things have you said, oh, I should read that book and do that thing and everything, but you never do it. Like you buy the books, you don't never read. That is just shiny object syndrome. I want you to practice the sermon, stay aligned with your goals. Okay. The second one is mastering the art of saying no. Now this can be wildly uncomfortable for a lot of people, especially if you were used to being like the yes person, always saying yes to everything. Do it to small things, like small, so if people ask you to do small things, you can just say no. It's easier when it's, you know, not like this huge monumental thing they want you to do. So practice saying no to small things and feel it out. Notice how your body feels. It's probably gonna feel uncomfortable, but we need to get you to a place that you become more brave and you can say no, even if it makes someone else upset. So start small and when you're brave, make it a big one. And number three, and I know a lot of you want to do this, but just feel like you can't, is take time to do nothing. Just be. We could also call this strategic inaction. Have you guys heard? I'm sure you've heard of that. It's giving yourself space and time to like think through a situation or get creative instead of just jumping into a solution right away um, and just because you need to push for success. So it is doing nothing is actually okay strategic in action we can give it that fancy name so it makes you feel better strategic in action giving yourself that space it is important it will change a lot of your decision making as well for the better but a little side note here because i know if you are used to hustling you might be a little addicted to it and don't want to let it go but let me just give you a little side note here just like a little bit of stress can motivate you so can a little bit of hustle however when it becomes habitual, it will wreak havoc on your nervous system and prime you for burnout. So I'm not saying that all hustle is bad. I am saying that we want to make sure that it doesn't start to affect your nervous system long term. With any of these, like think about the toll it has on your mental, physical and emotional health if you're not allowing yourself space here. So let's talk about stress. So I want you to understand, I mean, obviously you understand that the issues that you have as busy lawyers, um, things you have to deal with, um, we can see where the stress becomes out of hand and burnout starts to take over. But what you might not know is that stress and burnout are not the same things, but they are absolutely related. All right, so what's the difference between stress and burnout? I get this question all the time. So stress and burnout are two distinct conditions that share, they share similarities, but they have um, important differences. So stress is a natural response of the body. It perceives threats or demands, whether they're physical, physiological, emotional. And so that's what stress is. And stress can be positive. So positive stress is called eustress or a negative stress is distress, which most of us are more aware of. And in small doses, it can be helpful, like I said a minute ago, in motivating you to take action or overcome challenges. However, your body also needs to have the means to discharge the stress. And I don't think this gets talked about enough. Discharge the stress. And that's called um, completing the stress cycle. Okay, there is a book called Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle by Amelia and Emily Nagowski. And that is where I learned so much about this. And it's like a game changer. So if you're unable to decrease the stress hormones, once the stressful event has occurred, the body doesn't feel safe. So for example, if you're being chased by a bear, you're running and then the bear is gone, but your body doesn't know the bear is gone because your heart rate, like everything has ramped up and you're really not sure where the bear went. So you're still kind of scared. Your body doesn't feel safe, even though the stressor, the bear is, you can't see it, so it's gone it still does not feel safe. So your body will still stay ramped up and you'll stay in a, um, remain in a hyper vigilant state for, for longer than your body wants it to. And then if you don't ever discharge that energy, you've, you'll create like cycles of stuckness, stuck fear, stuck stress in your system. And that's gonna lead to chronic stress and eventually burnout. I know we always think, oh yeah, it's stress, it's fine. No, stress can really be a big problem to your system. Now, stress though, unlike burnout, can be managed a little bit better and, and a little quicker. Um, there's relaxation techniques, self-care, of course, which, which could be doing nothing, right? Um, exercise, body movements, and then of course, just healthy coping mechanisms. Okay, so burnout is, on the other hand, is a little different. It is a state of emotional, mental, and physical exhaustion caused by chronic stress. 
Okay. And there's a long list of signs and symptoms in relation to burnout, but burnout is best characterized by the following. So if you've looked this up at all, you're going to know these three things this is what they usually talk about. Emotional detachment or cynicism, decreased motivation and productivity and feeling overwhelmed and unable to cope with work or life demands. So with that, we have also what which makes it more detrimental to our health is these few things here feelings of hopelessness depression and sense of losing one's purpose and meaning of life hearing those three you can kind of see how burnout can become really dangerous if people are sitting in those types of feelings long term now unlike stress burnout requires more extensive intervention and support so burnout recovery um, will require more than just self-care, if you will. You're going to need to take time off of work. And just as an example, I was in burnout for three years before I fully recovered. So I took more, more time than I ever thought I'd ever in a million years to take off of work. So if you don't want that, <laughs> so remember, burnout, we need to work on this, right? So taking time off of work, seeking therapy or counseling is going to be very helpful, and then making significant lifestyle changes to address the underlying causes. So for example, if you're not doing nothing <laughs> on occasion, I would say, start there. Start doing nothing occasionally and see how you do. It might be uncomfortable, but it's worth it. I had all of these things before I was actually diagnosed with medical issues related to this. Totally didn't listen to my body or the signs. Brie, yes, that was me too. <laughs> Yeah, so we have to be aware. That's why we're doing this. I really want you guys to be aware of what is out there and what's possible to help think about it is this, that stress is the match and burnout is the flame. And really what we're doing when we're burning ourselves out is that we're lighting the match and letting it burn all the way out. So we don't want you to be on fire. We don't want you to burn out. We wanna make sure that you are taking care of yourself and you're doing the best things you can for yourself, for your family, for your business. Just to give you an example, the difference between stress and burnout, because I have a lot of people that say that I'm so burnt out. And when I ask them like what, what their symptoms are, they're talking more about the stress and not the burnout. And I don't want people to be confused. Stress is one thing, burnout is the other. They're just like burnout is basically stress going to chronic stress and at the end of the spectrum of chronic stress is burnout so stress would look like over engagement and then burnout is disengagement i mean if you look at these you can see that one's kind of on the the first this side and then definitely on the other side over emotions detached emotions hyperactivity hopelessness loss of energy loss of motivation physical toll emotional toll so these are, this is just a quick example of what it would look like if you were to compare stress and burnout.